I'm gonna start today by doing a little bit of math. So go ahead and grab a calculator and a piece of paper and a pencil and we'll get started. Let's start with the situation here. We have got uh, air and we have water. We have air with an N of one, uh, one and water with an N of 1.33. This is index of refraction. We learned about this yesterday. What I wanna do is I wanna practice some Snell's law. So if I take a angle of incidence coming in here from the water to the air, I'm gonna draw my angle here, angle of incidence. If that angle is 30, degrees. I would like to know what is the refracted angle. Go ahead, pause this video, do that, and uh, we'll come back and talk about the answer. Okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, I drew, redrew my picture because my 30 degree angle didn't look so good. So what I have here is 30 degrees going in. 1, or 1.33 times the sine of 30, that's n1 sine theta 1, is going to equal n2 sine theta 2. So n2 is 1 times the sine of theta 2. I solved that for theta 2, and I got 41.7 degrees, which is a little bit bent away from the normal. So it started in at 30, came out at 41.7. Let's try another one. Do the same problem with 40 degrees. Okay, and looking at my scenario, it's pretty much the same thing. All I did was replace my 30 with 40, solve this thing out, I got 58.7 degrees. So you go in at 40, come out at 58.7, that's the red uh, beam of light or ray of light in this document, or in this on uh, the board. Just for practice sake, do the exact same thing with 50. into a problem with 50. When I put the sine of 50 in here times 1.33, I get too big of a number. I can't take the inverse sine of that kind of a number. I get an error on my calculator. Now how does that work? I came in at 50 degrees. Where does it come out? Well this actually has to do with something called total internal reflection. There is a point where it bends so much that it doesn't leave the material. When it comes up, it bends. Notice it bends away from the normal. There's a point where it's gonna bend at 90 degrees. Anything beyond 90 degrees actually doesn't escape the material. And you get what's called total internal reflection. It's actually reflected inside the water. You can't see out of the water after that angle. That angle is called the critical angle. The critical angle is where it bends at 90 degrees. Let's take a look and see a problem. Let's see some examples of uh, how that works. Okay, so I have a piece of plastic here. This is just a clear piece of plastic. And I'm going to shine a laser through it. I want you to watch what happens. Do you see how the laser bounces back and forth inside the plastic? It doesn't escape, most of the energy does not escape out the side of the plastic because I'm beyond the critical angle. If I come in at a very steep angle, it will go right through it. But if I go to that critical angle, once I hit that critical angle, it will no longer escape the plastic. If I take a, another piece of plastic here, very similar, you can see this one's even curved. If I send a signal in one side of this plastic, it will come out the other side. It actually bounces around. It totally internally reflects all the way around this and comes out the other side. This is a pretty big deal for us. We can send signals around corners by turning this laser on and off. Uh, something a little even crazier. Uh, we get something big and uh, round like this. We send a signal in and it makes it all the way around to the end. So uh, this is the basis behind what's called fiber optics. I actually have a piece of cabling here. This is a plastic cable, so very, very, very thin. 
Uh, it's not quite as thin as a fiber optic cable. A fiber optic cable is actually made of glass uh, and it is uh, about the width of a human hair. But you can see with this cable, I got one end here and then the other end here. And if I send a signal through this cable, do you see how it comes out the other side? So this is the other end of the cable right up here. And it's looping all the way around in this, uh, this fiber optic or this uh, little plastic cable and it comes out the other side. So essentially, I can put data in one side and get data out the other. This is the basis between, behind fiber optics. On is a one, off is a zero. And the speed at which I can send a signal, it travels at the speed of light, but the amount of data I can send is basically limited to how quickly I can flash this thing on and off and how quickly I can read it on the other side. So here's the setup I have now. I have a laser pointer here that is shining the laser through this water. On the other side of the water, I actually have this little uh, cork that I'm gonna take out so the water's gonna pee. Let's see what happens. So as I take the cork out, the laser actually stays in the water all the way down here. The laser is bouncing back and forth inside the water. You can see that it's uh, total internally reflecting all the way down here into the sink. This is one of my favorite demonstrations because you're actually bending the light as it goes through the water and it's still hitting my hand even down here. It's not making it out here as much. It's bending all the way down and you can see it in the palm of my hand. Total internal reflection. All right, let's talk again about this critical angle, how we solve for it, and what we would do with different materials. So if we're looking at water and air, we have a, an index of refraction of 1.33 and an index of refraction of one. The critical angle goes from the higher density, optical density material to the lower. That way it bends away from the normal. And we want it to bend away at 90 degrees. So this actually is going to bend right along the surface of the water. So the question here is, what is this critical angle? Well, to solve this, we actually use Snell's law, just like we would normally do. N1 sine theta one is equal to N2 sine theta two. So what we have here is we have N1 sine theta one. So let's do that with, uh, let's go with up here. One times the sine of 90 is equal to 1.33 times the sine of theta two. Now the sine of 90 is actually one. One is right here times one because that's the index of refraction of air. So we end up with one is equal to 1.33 times the sine of theta two. When we calculate that out, we get theta, our critical angle is gonna be 49 degrees for water. So it's about 48, 49 degrees for water uh, in terms of anything beyond that you're not gonna be able to see outside of the water. Now that's for water. For different materials, they have different critical angles. Uh, you know, glass, you put in uh, 1.5. Uh, diamond, you put in 2.42 uh, if you're going from diamond to air. But what if you're not going from, let's say, uh, glass to air or water to air? What if you're going from glass to water? That happens as well. So if we say 1.5, Actually, the 1.5 has to be down here. It's the more optically dense. 1, 1.33, 1.5. So this is water and this is glass. So in this case, we are also going to have a critical angle and we would solve it the exact same way. Uh, we're trying to find the critical angle here. It bends at 90 degrees. Now, in fiber optic cables, that, this is what they play with. They actually have a fiber optic cable actually has a core. This is the core and it has what's called a cladding, which is another uh, optically dense uh, material outside of that core. So the beam of light actually comes in here, total internally reflects all the way down this cable because it has a different optical density between the cladding and the core. Let's see if we can't put all this together. All right, 
All right, let me show you what I got here. I got some really cool stuff. So putting this all together, I have a speaker. And in this speaker, instead of uh, taking the input jack to this speaker and hooking it into my phone or hooking it into a radio, I actually have it hooked into a solar cell. And I don't know if you can hear this. Turn it up a little bit. But when light hits it, these lights here are humming. It makes a sound. Okay? So that's what that does. All right? Now, at the same time, I have uh, this uh, little LED. And so the LED here is a, uh, it's a light, and I have it hooked into my phone. So uh, just the speaker jack of my phone. So the, the music that comes out of here goes into here. But instead of being a speaker, it actually makes this LED flash back and forth. And if you look real closely, it does flash back and forth at the same frequency that this thing is telling, uh, you know, should be telling the speaker how to move back and forth. So what happens if we put these two things together? Cut the light, cut the information. So my phone is creating the signal. The signal is turning into light. The light is going across space and being read by the solar cell hooked into the speaker. Now, that's not quite exactly how it works because we have to have this fiber optic cable in between. I actually have a fiber optic cable here. This is uh, an optical cable you'd use for your stereo. It actually is fiber optic. And so if I put this on this end here, you can see that coming out the other side is the signal. This is how fiber optics works. And this is how towers talk to each other. The towers have, uh, are connected through fiber optic cables under the ground. So that information from my tower in Iowa finds its way to the tower. It actually, there are junctions that tell it what direction to go, depending upon what number it's called. And then it makes its way to New York to that tower. And it gives the information at the speed of light through glass, through this fiber optic cable which is made of glass. Now one fiber optic cable, since we can turn this thing on and on and off, off and off and on and off very, very fast with ones and zeros, can send like a thousand different phone calls in one cable. We just have to know how to code it, how to flash it, and then how to read it at the other side. So this situation where we have the information turning into light and that light being read on another side, is what uh, towers do in order to talk to each other. And it all has to do with total internal reflection with fiber optics. Thank you so much for watching. If you like science and you like this video, feel free to like this video below and subscribe for future updates.